perpetrator of the attack on Manchester Arena. We've seen that he visited an extremist contact in prison on more than one occasion. However, neither MI5 nor counterterrorism police took any follow-up action. In our opinion, known extremist prisoners should not be able to maintain links with those vulnerable to extremism. We've therefore recommended that the approved visitors scheme is extended to all extremist prisoners. We've also seen issues around travel arise in the case of Abedi and other perpetrators. MI5 decided not to place travel monitoring or travel restrictions on Salman Abedi, and this allowed him to return undetected to the United Kingdom in the days immediately before he carried out his attack. MI5 have admitted that given the information they had on Abedi, they should have done so, and they've now revised their policies in this respect. The case also highlights deficiencies in MI5 system for monitoring those individuals of interest who are not currently under active investigation. And in the case of another of the perpetrators, the system for monitoring those seen in the peripheries of more than one investigation. Abedi's case had in fact been flagged up for further review, but MI5 systems moved too slowly and that review had not happened prior to his launching his attack. We also note in relation to Salman Abedi that despite being known to MI5 from 2014, he was not at any point considered for a referral to the PREVENT programme. The failure to use the PREVENT programme is similarly not a new issue, and we would have expected lessons already to have been learnt. Uh, MI5 has acknowledged that he should have been put under some sort of travel monitoring is an indication that uh, that was a power they had. And I think part of the report, not just on travel, but in other areas, demonstrates that it's not for want of powers, necessarily. It's about how those powers are being applied. And, uh, and clearly, with Salman Abedi, uh, he was frequently travelling uh, to Libya. Both MI5 and CTP, counter-terrorism, had received information about that. Um, and therefore... Um, Given uh, that, um, that that was known and that the powers were there, that actually monitoring and having alerts about his travel arrangements would have been a good idea. And they've acknowledged that that's something to be done. I think, I can't go into detail, but I think they are actively looking at um, how they monitor both active and closed subjects of interest now. Uh, that said, the, I think the, the impression that we have formed is that he was not treated as he was an asylum seeker. He, was, uh, uh, he uh, described himself as being underage, and he was given appropriate support for somebody in that position. But the clear evidence that he had been with IS, uh, that he had witnessed or participated or been involved in acts of violence, and his behaviour which showed some clear signs of disturbance in settling in and subsequently, and some of the things he said, should have ended up being looked at as being a security risk. That's the point. But we will have to wait and see what all this new material tells us about.